Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, what we're looking at right now is the plinth and platter of the Crosley Danzette Jr. I love this turntable. Um, I cannot show the full thing due to the angle and due to the type of show that we're doing. So um, you'll just have to trust me on that. But it's a cool turntable and we're going to enjoy listening to it in just a minute. But what we're here for today is an amazing album. I know a lot of folks out there really into collecting like iconic record albums, famous albums, you know, not just, you know, necessarily music that, you know, they like personally, but also just, you know, like famous albums. This one is both for me. This is Elvis Presley's Moody Blue album, 1977. This was released just four weeks before his untimely death. I've been an Elvis fan ever since I was a kid. My father um, really loved Elvis and actually got to see Elvis in Denver at the Denver Coliseum. And the stories <laughs> tells me about him and his friend, you know, getting Elvis everything. Elvis hot dogs, Elvis hamburgers, Elvis sodas. And he said it was like God had entered the arena. And if you've listened to a live Elvis uh, recording, what comes to mind specifically are, are like the... Uh, um, Madison Square Garden concerts and even the the Aloha from Hawaii, you know they they play the uh, uh, 2001 Space Odyssey uh, music and it's like a big when he comes on stage, an amazing amazing thing from what I've seen. Anyway, he told me it was just like that, just phenomenal. He's only 20 feet from Elvis. I've got an interesting Elvis story as well, so hang on to the end of this video, and I will tell you about it. But this album is the last of the last for Elvis. This was his last studio album. And what's interesting about this album, a couple of things. By this point, Elvis was sadly on a downhill spiral. And he wasn't showing up to studio dates. And um, Colonel Parker and, was having a hard time. Interesting though, it says executive producer Elvis Presley. I think he might have fired um, Tom Parker at that point. Uh, Felton Jarvis was heavily involved. That's why he gets the associate producer credit right there. But I remember there being a lot of talk, or not remember, I've read there was a lot of talk about they couldn't come up with enough material because Elvis, you know, just wasn't feeling it. He wasn't producing like he used to. Definitely never lost his love of music. I mean, even on his last day, he was still playing the piano and, you know, singing and whatnot. So they had a hard time coming up with music for this album. And so, it, unfortunately, they used some studio stuff from uh, 76. They used some live material from 77. They had to edit things. And it, it took some doing to, to, to get this last album out. And as I said, only four weeks before he did pass away. Some of it was recorded uh, at Graceland in the uh, Jungle Room which was just called The Den when Elvis lived there. He wasn't, the jungle room came later, uh, some sort of uh, comment made by the press and it was called The Jungle Room. But it was a jungle themed um, den is what it was. And uh, this and the previous album, Elvis Presley Boulevard, I think it was called, um, made heavy use of uh, material from that session. That being said, what's one thing that's really cool about this album, I mean, there's many things that are very cool about this album, but one of them, most notably, is something we can all appreciate, is it's pressed in this beautiful, beautiful blue vinyl. This is the original 1977 repress, and it looks immaculate. You could still see that rainbow sheen that I talk about, which is usually a good indicator that the original polish is still on there, and... You know, it's in good condition. And uh, look at the markings on there. Just, just beautiful. It is a pristine, pristine copy. I picked this up for, I think, 10 bucks. I, how can you beat that? You know what I mean? But the color of this vinyl, who would have guessed that this was, you know, 43, 44 years old? It looks like it's, you know, this is like a hipster repressing of something that, you know, they got it. Um, Urban Outfitters, <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's not, it's 43 years, half a century nearly. Um, so yeah, and ironically, the rare edition of Moody Blue was the black vinyl. If you could find the black vinyl one, that was the rare one because the majority was pressed in this. So if you are not an Elvis fan per se, um, let's. I wanna give you a little cursory tour of this album 
and uh, play some of my favorite songs and um, I think you'll enjoy it. And then I've got my little Elvis story at the end. You want to stay tuned for that for sure. Um, so yeah, let's go through here. And um, one of my favorites is number three, Little Darlin'. This is sort of like a 50s sounding uh, song. And he used to get a kick out of doing this because it was a goofy song. And the live versions of him playing this are, uh, are hilarious because he, he does not take himself too seriously. So here's a little snippet of that. can't play much as you know unfortunately but that that one cracks me up if you listen to i think it's the elvis presley today album i think they do that song as well if i'm not mistaken at least the extended version that's on apple music they that concert that that was from they did that song and um (laughs) it was just you know he thought it was funny people just loved it of course all right let's i want to show you a couple songs on the other side here uh way down this is an original a couple of these were like I said reused songs this particular one way down was a breakout hit I think this this um, record was a hit for him I mean this song way down was a hit for him after he passed away but it is a really cool song so give this a listen I wish I could play more but I can't um let's see here what else do we have on this side that I want to play for you uh, Moody Blue will play that um, song next. So this is Moody Blue. This is definitely 70s Elvis. Different sound than 60s Elvis. A lot of songs have uh, country undertones. So a lot of people love the 70s Elvis. My, you know, I kind of prefer a little bit earlier. I love the 60s soundtrack stuff. And I know even Elvis himself thought a lot of those songs were just so goofy. I'm trying to get this straightened out here. Um, Elvis himself thought a lot of the soundtrack stuff was so silly. But I mean, like, you know, Blue Hawaii and stuff. And it's just I, every song on that album is a good song. Every single song song on that album is a good song but anyway here's an interesting look at a beautiful record um an amazing and the 24th album of elvis presley and his last studio album just a phenomenal career continues to this day to sell more albums than most artists okay so my elvis story really quickly this happened last year at ces my wife and i actually had a rare opportunity to go and do a backstage tour of um, the hotel that he would perform at and that he would uh, has had residency at in Vegas. And we not only got a tour of the showroom that a lot of the a lot of the footage you see on YouTube, Elvis performing in the in the showroom itself, right there in the hotel in the resort. Uh, at the time, it was the Hilton. Um, you know, we got to tour all around that private tour by one of the management team that you know partnered with us to do this and we got to stand in the place that Elvis would stand before a show and they have it marked there's an outline on the floor if I, if I can find the picture I'll post it in the community section you'll see it in your feed uh, but a super cool rare opportunity to walk where Elvis walked we got to go in his private elevator private dressing room his suite up on the top floor had been completely gutted by then so there's no point in seeing that but we literally walked where Elvis walked, and it was it was an amazing thing. One of these days, I need to go to Graceland. It's on the to-do list. Absolutely. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. Uh, tell me, do you have Moody Blue? Do you want to find it? Where The record shop that I bought this from had like five copies, um, so it, wasn't, it was not hard to find. That being said, I've never seen it anywhere else. I've never seen it at Second and Charles. I've never seen it at a thrift store. You know, I'm sure you can find it online. It's not a particularly rare record, but it's definitely an interesting one, and it's a beautiful record both physically and musically. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. That's going to do it for today, guys. Happy record hunting. We will see you tomorrow.